Hello, and welcome to the UW Style Video Production Lab Safety Series. I'm Joey Lang, and today's video will be covering boom microphones. This video will be covering how to set up your microphone, how to operate it, and to avoid potential problems with your audio. The boom kit comes with five components, the mic, an XLR cable, a shock mount, an XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter, and the boom. To set up the microphone, first guide it into the mount. Some mounts have circular elastic that you can simply slide the mic in. Others have crossing bands. Twist the bands so that the microphone won't slide out. You can extend the lengths of the boom by twisting the locking rings. The mics can be positioned by having a crew member hold the boom, or you can use a C-stand mount. To use a C-stand, turn the stand so the largest leg is facing your subject, and attach the boom mount to the stand. Finally, put the boom in the mount. Be advised, the longer you extend the boom, the more you run the risk of tipping the stand and damaging the mic. If necessary, add more sandbags or have somebody hold the boom instead. Wrap the XLR cord around the boom, leaving enough slack at the end to plug into the microphone. You may need to use tape to secure the cord on the other end, or to keep slack from falling. Most DSLRs only have a 3.5mm microphone jack. If yours is like that, use the adapter supplied in the microphone kit. If you need more cord than the length provided in the kit, ask a lab assistant for another XLR cable to use as an extension. If you are using the mic outside or it's in motion, slide the windscreen onto the microphone. The windscreen reduces air currents on the microphone, preventing rumbles and loud pops. For any extreme wind conditions, ask for a brushy windscreen, also known as a dead cat, like this. Now that you have the microphone set up, here's how you operate it. The first step is to turn the microphone on. You can tell the mic is on if the light flashes for one second. It is normal for the light to turn off after one second. If the light stays on without going off, be warned the battery has less than eight hours left. Finally, if the light comes on just briefly, the battery is dead. So if it is low, unscrew the bottom of the mic and swap the new battery in. Make sure you tell the lab assistant at check-in that one of the batteries is dead. Above the power switch is the attenuation switch. Attenuation is the damping of sound affecting the volume and quality of your sound waves. The flat line represents a linear response which collects all audio without attenuation. The angle line represents a low cut response which attenuates frequencies below 100 Hz to reduce wind and impact noise. Before you start shooting, ensure your camera is collecting audio from the mic. In your camera under the audio settings, you can view the audio levels the microphone is picking up. If there is no audio, check the connections and the battery on the microphone. Position your mic as close to the scene as possible without being in frame. Always have somebody monitoring the audio levels throughout your shoot. To check your levels, have your actor say some lines close to how they would when recording. Adjust the gain in your camera to where the loudest sounds are around negative 12 decibels. When the gain in your camera is too low, you'll have to amplify in post which results in a lot of funky noise. When the gain is too high, the levels go into red. This results in audio peaking, which distorts the audio and can be very distracting to viewers. To review, insert the mic into the mount, adjust the length of the boom, wrap cords around the boom, check the battery and audio levels, and always have someone monitoring the audio during the shoot. And that concludes using boom microphones. Until next time, I'm Joey Lang.